Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I am Star Hepzibah, Star for short. As always, it is such an honor and a pleasure to be here with each and every one of you. It is no coincidence that uh, the Lord led you here and I pray that the Father allows you to hear this message with your spiritual ears. I pray that you allow this message to permeate within your soul and that you do not take lightly what Yahweh is saying in this moment. There is a lot that the Lord has been sharing with us. It's a lot that the Lord has been preparing us for. The Father has uh, given us instructions. Um, there have been a lot of things that he has required of us to do for our good we had to make the decision as he called us into obedience we had to make the decision if we would obey or if we would follow the ways and the plans of our own and so in the previous message the lord spoke and he let us know that he is now on the scene if you haven't had an opportunity to listen to it, I truly suggest that you take a moment, hear out everything that the Lord is saying, and then listen to this message. I cannot stress enough the importance of obedience and what it means to take heed to what the Lord Yah is saying. When he speaks, and I've been saying this for, for a while, when the Lord speaks, he is speaking for a reason. Like the Lord is not going to keep repeating himself for no reason. It's a wake-up call. It's the sign to get yourself on track. Do what it is that you need to do. The Lord, Yah does not operate in vain. Everything that he does, it serves a purpose. And it's up to us whether we will listen, whether we will take heed or not. And so this message is, um, I mean, all the messages that the Lord Yah give are equally important. But this message literally has me like trembling in fear. You know, I really had to take a deep breath before I started recording because I just really want to make sure that I am allowing the Holy Spirit to have his way. And when I say that, I don't mean that in a sense where I don't allow him to have his way in any other message because I do. But this message is, you will understand if you listen to the previous message. He has literally stepped onto the scene. And our creator, our master, Alpha and Omega, the author and finisher of our faith, is now interceding. He is now making good on the things that he has spoken about. And we are going to get into that. The Lord gave me, um, he literally gave me this message this morning. I did not know that the Lord was taking me here. I can't stress enough that... You really just don't want to play with Yahweh. You know, we should not have to force his hand. So we will be reading from Jeremiah chapter 21 and 22. I will be reading uh, the easy version. And I noticed when the Lord also, when Yahweh wants me to make something extremely clear, he'll have me go to the easy because I studied from the King James. I studied from the King James 
in a uh, NLT. But the Lord made it very clear that he wants me to read this from the easy version um, because he wants to make sure that there is no misunderstandings. All right. And again, you know, this channel, we go into the word. So um, I read fairly quickly, but I am going to allow the Holy Spirit to go at his pace. Um, yeah, I'm just going to let him do what he does best. And for those of you that are still here at the end of the message, then you get it. You understand. You understand. All right, so Jeremiah 21, the easy version, verse 1, starting at verse 1. The Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. King Zedekiah sent Malchajah's son, Pasher, to speak to Jeremiah. He also sent the priest, Zephaniah, Messiah's son. They went to say to Jeremiah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, is attacking us. Please ask the Lord to help us. Perhaps he will do a powerful miracle as he has done for us in the past. Perhaps he will cause Nebuchadnezzar to go away and leave us alone. Jeremiah answered him, Tell Zedekiah that the Lord, Israel's Elohim, says this. Your soldiers have gone outside the city to fight against the king of Babylon, and his soldiers, but I will make the weapons of your soldiers useless. You will have to bring them all back into the city. I myself will use my great power and strength to fight against you. I will do that because I am very angry with you. I will attack everything that lives in this city, both people and animals. A very bad disease will kill them. The Lord Yah also said this. Then I will put King Zedekiah of Judah under the power of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. I will do the same thing to any of his officers or people who are still alive. Those are the people that war. Famine or disease has not already killed. I will give them to King Nebuchadnezzar and to their enemies who want to kill them. He will tell his soldiers to kill them. He will not be kind to them and he will kill them all. Verse 8. But also tell the people that the Lord Yah says this. I will let you choose between two things. One is the way that will give you life. The other is the way that will give you death. Anyone who stays in the city will die. War or famine or disease will kill them. But you may choose to leave the city. You may put yourselves under the power of Babylon's army that is attacking the city. Anyone who does that will continue to live. I, the Lord Yah, tell you this. I have decided not to rescue this city. Instead, I will destroy it. I will give it to the king of Babylon. He will destroy it with fire. Verse 11. This is the Lord's message to the king of Judah, to his family and his officers. Descendants of King David, the Lord Yah says this to you. Every day you must be fair as you judge people. Punish those who rob other people. Punish those who are cruel to other people. Help the people that they have hurt. If you do not judge in a fair way, I will be very angry. My anger will burn like hot fire that nobody can stop. It will destroy you because of the evil things that you have done. The Lord Yah says, I have turned against you, Jerusalem's palace. Kings sit there on their thrones. 
on a high rock above the valley. You say we are safe here in our strong building. No enemy can get in here to attack us. But I will punish you for everything that you have done. I will destroy your palace with fire. That fire will destroy everything that is around you. That is what the Lord Yah says. Verse uh, chapter 22. And I'm going to be reading up to verse 8. It says, The Lord said to me, Go down to the palace of the king of Judah. You must say to him, King of Judah, descendant of King David, listen to this message from the Lord. Your officers and the people of your palace must listen too. The Lord Yah says, You must do things that are right and fair. Punish those who rob other people. Help the people that they have hurt. Do not be cruel to foreigners who are living among you. Do not cheat them. Do not hurt or cheat widows or children who have no family. Stop killing people who have not done anything wrong. If you are careful to obey these commands, David's descendants will continue to rule as kings in this city. They will ride on horses and on chariots to come in through the city gates. Their officers and their people will come with them. But if you do not obey these commands, I will destroy this palace. I promise you that it will become a heap of stones. That is what I, the Lord, tell you. The Lord Yah says this about the palace of the king of Judah. This palace is as beautiful as Gelad. It is as beautiful as Lebanon's mountains. But I will cause it to become a wilderness, a place where nobody lives anymore. I will send enemies to destroy this place. They will use their weapons to knock it all down. They will cut down the strong beams of cedar wood. They will throw them into the fire. People from many nations will see what has happened here. They will ask each other, why has the Lord destroyed this great city? Other people will answer, he did it because they refused to obey their covenant with the Lord Yah, their, their Elohim. They worshiped other gods instead of him. All right, so that that concludes the reading for for this message. So, if you had an opportunity to listen to the previous message, you know that the Lord spoke, and He was saying that He's on the scene, right? I had let me just be very clear in the fact that me, Star Hepsiba, the flesh, had no idea. That the Lord Yah was bringing me to this passage until a few hours ago um, when he led me here. And it was by random. As I began to study and read into the word, I realized that it was a continuation from the previous message that the Lord Yah had me deliver. The Lord is saying he is on the scene now. And there are some things that you are about to see. Now, whether you fall on the side of obedience or whether you fall on the side of disobedience, we all are going to witness the hand of Yah. It just decide, It just depends on whether you've been obedient or not. I want to read something to you that, that the Lord Yah led me to as I was in my studies. Um, it says, a Lord of justice. All right. So it says, uh, Judah's kings are preventing Elohim's people from experiencing his kingdom of justice and peace. So in a collection of four prophecies, Jeremiah condemns Judah's last king, Zedekiah, and the relatives who ruled before him. He promises Elohim will raise a new leader for his people. Under siege from Babylon, 
Zedekiah asked Jeremiah to pray for Elohim's protection, but for decades, Zedekiah and his family have abused their power, perpetrated injustice, abandoned orphans, neglected the poor, rejected Yahweh's laws, done violence to foreigners, and sacrificed their children to secure the support of foreign gods, lowercase g, and kings. Jeremiah is blunt. Elohim will not protect Zedekiah. The loss of his kingdom is his family's fault. And while the royal family dismisses Jeremiah's critique, every nation knows it's true. Jeremiah tells Zedekiah he should not expect compassion from Elohim, but catastrophic defeat in exile. And if citizens want to escape this judgment, their only hope is to abandon Zedekiah and surrender to Babylon. Jeremiah then describes how Judah's kingship has been corrupt for a long time and details how Zedekiah's unjust predecessors all died. One of Zedekiah's brothers was a greedy king. He made slaves of his people and like his brother, he refused to defend the poor and needy. And for his greed and oppression, Elohim disposed and exiled him to Egypt after ruling for only three months. Another of Zedekiah's brothers made a string of failed military alliances. After a coup, he was exiled to a Babylonian prison for treason. Zedekiah's evil nephew also ruled for only three months before willingly surrendering to Babylon never to set foot in Judah again. Zedekiah's family tree is full of unjust kings who rebelled against Elohim. Every one of them was judged for their role in scattering Yahweh's people like sheep among the wolves of the earth. But speaking to his fellow citizens, Jeremiah says that Elohim has plans to gather his scattered people once again and restore their kingdom under the reign of a new and good king from the ancient line of David. Unlike Zedekiah and his family, he will reign wisely. He will be called the Lord of justice and begin a new era of peace and freedom for Yahweh's people in their own land. Um, and let me just read this last portion. It says in Hebrew, the title Lord of Justice sounds very familiar to Zedekiah, but Zedekiah and his family were unwise rulers and evil leaders, even though they were all sons of David and part of Yahweh's chosen dynasty. Jeremiah and his generation will have to wait for another son from the chosen royal line, the son of David, who will rule wisely and lead his scattered people to safety is Jesus, Yahuwah. Yahuwah is the true Lord of justice and the true Zedekiah. When Yahuwah first announced his kingdom had arrived, he said he had come to do justice for the poor the imprisoned, the blind, and the oppressed. He came to share his rule, not with the powerful, but with the hungry, persecuted, and humble. Yahuwah came to find the lost sheep that Zedekiah and his family scattered. And to prove the point, Yahuwah brought his kingdom of justice, peace. Let me read that again. Yahuwah, brought his kingdom of justice, peace, and freedom 
to bear by healing the sick, curing the demonized, and raising the dead. Yahuwah is the true king of Elohim's people and the Lord of justice. Jeremiah prophesied. So, Yahuwah invites all of us to surrender to him. There is no true justice in the kings of this world, but there is in him. All right. So, the Lord allowed me to see that article and it just really solidified everything. And it was the confirmation, right? The Lord, Yah, allowed me to see that so that I could understand, one, this was something that he was saying in this moment right now. And that is something that he wants me to release on the channel today. Like, I need you to do this right now. This was something that cannot wait. And so, you know, you may look at yourself and you may say, oh, well, you know, I wasn't unkind to any orphans or I didn't imprison anyone unlawfully or and that may not be your case. Right. But there were some things that the Lord Yah asked you to do. As it relates to maybe, you know, helping out your community, helping out family, you know, just being obedient to the things that he's asked you to do and you were not. As we learn, um, King Zedekiah, um, he did not humble himself. His family did not humble himself. It was only when he found himself at a place where he was being um, held accountable that he humbled himself and asked Jeremiah to go before the Lord for him. And the Lord was saying, no. That's not going to happen. I expected these things from you. I've told you over and over and over and over again. I've warned you. I've given you plenty of time to do what you were supposed to do. But see, what happens is a lot of the times people take Yah and his word for granted thinking, oh, well, he hasn't done anything or I'm okay, you know. I'm still living life. The Lord hasn't said anything to me directly or he hasn't said. But a lot of those people fail to miss those signs, those messages that the Lord Yah has been bringing. They hear it for the moment. And then after they're done listening to the message, they forget what the Lord said. And it's not until... He brings about punishment that it's like, okay, you know, help me, Lord. I know you've brought me out of things before, but um, I need you, you know, the same way you brought me out of things before, I know you'll bring me out of this now. The Lord is saying, no, my, I have put my foot down on these matters. You have been disobedient for a lot of people. And this is not for everyone. Like I said, there are two sets of people. There are people who have been obedient and have listened to what the Lord Yah has asked you to do. And then there's those people who have not listened, who have not been obedient. Either side you sit on, we are all going to see this. And so when the hands of Yah, as you start to see the hands of Yah come down, he wants you to know you don't have to wonder why is this happening? He's letting us know beforehand. The, this is the reason why these things are taking place, because my people have not stayed true to the covenant. A lot of these people have made covenants with the Lord Yah by saying, Lord, I'll do this or I'll do that, you know, and the Lord is holding you to what you said you will do. And when you're found not fulfilling the plan, the destiny, the agreement, there's a price to pay. 
And the reason why this is important for the people who have been obedient is because when you see the hands of Yah move, he's going to be moving on people that you know. He could be moving, he could be um, causing his judgment to come down on, on friends, family members, co-workers. These will be people that you will know. It's not, we'll hear about things happening in the distant land or, you know, even within our communities. We will hear of these things going on, but a lot of these things are going to be taking place right up under our noses. And the Lord Yah does not want you to get pulled in. He does not want you to be suckered in to trying to do something about a situation that he has already put his judgment on. So in other words, there's nothing that you can do. Yahweh's judgment is his judgment. That's it. And for those who are sitting on the side of the unfavorable judgment, the Lord Yah is saying, and you can read it in his word, he's saying you have two options. You live or you die. And you saying, Lord, I want to live, is going to come with a price. It's not going to be easy because you have to, you have to now live with the decisions that you've made. So the Lord is letting us know beforehand that this is already taking place. This has already started to take place. For those of you who have been obedient, continue to be obedient. Continue to listen and, and follow the lead of the Holy Spirit. If he tells you to do something, do it. There may be some people who may get upset with you. There may be some people who are confused and don't understand why you're moving the way you move in, it doesn't matter. Your obedience is, is going to protect you. For those of you who have not been obedient, I pray God's mercy over your life. And I pray that you choose to live and that you choose to just receive and accept the things that you need to in order to be in right standing with Yah. Because that's all that should really matter. At least you have another opportunity to get it right. Will you have to go through some things? Yes, but we all do. No one is exempt from having to, you know, be judged before Yahweh. Like we all have to be judged. We all have to stand before him. We all have to account for the things that we've done. Even on this side, a lot of times people think that only the judgment only comes after life. No, we have to be held responsible and accountable for the things that we do and the things that we don't do here on this side of living. The Lord has been sending out his warnings. He's been warning his children left and right. We really, none of us have an excuse. You either accepted his word for what it was and got yourself together or you continue to play games and you continue to call his bluff. And the Lord let us know very clearly in the previous message, he was putting his hand down. I know every time the Lord sends me that scripture, every time it never fails, he's been sending me. So there's a scripture for those of you who haven't heard the previous message. There was, there's a scripture that the Lord gave me in um, the last message I released and Every time he gives me that particular scripture, he's been doing it for years, for years. It's been a very long time and he doesn't give it to me all the time. There's certain seasons that the Lord Yah gives me that message. And when he gives me that scripture, I know because I see it. And it don't be long after. Usually when he gives it to me, it's a short period after that. And I start seeing the hands of Yah just moving. In some, it's favorable. And in some, it's not. But he does this with us. He, he goes before us and he tells us these things so we could be prepared for the things that we are either one about to encounter 
or the things that we are about to just see from a standpoint outside of our own. Like, yeah, (laughs) you know, this message is very, it's a heavy message. Although I don't feel heavy. I personally don't feel heavy, but I know it's, it's such, it's a powerful message. And the Lord is saying, now you guys are about to sit back and now watch me move. Now you're about to see what happens when you're disobedient because you, and, and I know sometimes you get caught up in the world. You get caught up with everyday living, but you cannot do that. It's imperative that you stay before him. You cannot get lax. You cannot become lax. And this is for the people who have been obedient. Listen to this. Even in your obedience, even in your well-doing, continue to do well because your life will get better. Right. You'll start to see how the Lord will begin to just elevate you and take you higher. Do not do not get to those higher places and forget the Lord. Don't get to those higher places and forget what he's brought you through or forget, you know, who he is in your life. And those expectations that you still have, you still have to go before the Lord. This should be a lifestyle. Us reading, praying, worshiping, being obedient, you know, being faithful. This is a lifestyle. You have to stay within that lifestyle because if you don't, you will be judged. The Lord will, you'll either be judged on this side or the Lord will take you up out of here and your final judgment will be awaiting you on the other side. But no matter how you look at it, you will be judged. And yes, it is easy to get caught up. That's why you have to stay in his word. But I hope you guys receive this message. And I pray that you have a blessed day in Yahuwah's name.